Welcome to What Do You Really Want? I am so excited because I'm blessed to be here with two amazing souls. I have Emily Gibson over here. She's CEO of Beyond the Rank. And I have Ronnie Brown over here, CEO of Girl CEO, okay? <laughs> and Herlistic, it's one of my favorite teas that I drink and post about all the time. So I'm so excited to be joined by you ladies today. We are kicking off my brand new book, What Do You Really Want? Yay. And Yay. live audience clap. I feel so blessed because when I decided to do a tour, I was like, I want to bring other women up with me and elevate you guys and make sure that people know about your excellence and your genius. And you have so much goodness to give the world. So we're like, let's open it up and have them ask questions. You know, so yes. I'm so excited and I'm thankful that you guys made the trek out here to support me of in this course. book. And I know it's going to change lives. So, okay, what do you really want was birthed like just, a, what, a couple weeks ago out into the world, but it's been in my belly for three years. And so the way it came to be, you guys, was I have been coaching people for 12 years and I was like, gosh, if I could put it in a book and teach people exactly what I do to help people get to success in whatever area they're in. I want to put it in a book. Mm -hmm. And so I have my podcast, I don't know if you know the story, for almost six years. And my literary agent was actually listening in to my podcast and she messages me on Instagram. She's like, you need a book. And I'm like, what? Like, who's this like girl? Like I, could, I didn't recognize the name. She's like, you need a book, let's get on a call. And she ended up signing me and getting me a really great deal and it's been a whole process that I can't wait to like teach you guys all how to do if you ever want to do a book. I know you've already <laughs> talked to Nina. I already connected you to Nina because you already have a great book too. But anyways, so today it's all about figuring out what it is that you really want. And one of the things is when I ask people that question, they usually go, oh, well, I know that I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I want to stop struggling. You guys know it as coaches. Yeah. People always know what they don't want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I decided to start the book off. Step one is figuring out everything that you don't want. Because then it's like we have a good starting list of what we're no longer going to accept in our lives. Mm -hmm. So what I would love to do is I'm going to ask you, Ronnie, first. Okay. What was that turning point in your life when you decided to start Girl CEO, Herlistic? You go, okay, you know, I'm done making money for other people. I'm going to do it for me. <laughs> that's a that's a really good question. I think it um, it really happened when I realized that I was allowing other people to monetize me before I was smart enough to monetize myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's always a season that we go through where we allow other people to see the value in us before we truly see the value in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we have to take a moment to take a step back and say. If this person sees that I'm an asset and that I can add value to what they're doing and they can pay me to do this, and I don't care if you're in corporate America, I don't care if you know you are working a nine to five, whatever it is that you're doing, or you may be in, a, in affiliate marketing, right? Mm -hmm. If someone can see the value in you and you can make sales and you can add value to someone else's company in corporate America, believe it or not, you have a gift and you have something that you can do for yourself that you can monetize. Yes. Everybody has a gift. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was waking up and saying, girl, you have a gift. Mm -hmm. Like get to work and do something for yourself. Don't put any limitations on your life. And you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to have it all together to do it. And then I just... I just took a leap. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. Let me make sure I say that. <laughs> that is very good, right? Okay. <laughs> I just jumped. Because here's the thing. If you're already down here, you mm -hmm. know, I'm a young team mom, broke, grew up in the hood, didn't go to college. I can't go any lower mm -hmm. than where I am right now. So taking a risk and betting on myself is only going to put me in a position where I can move up. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that to everyone who's listening to this today, look at where you are right now. By taking that leap, you can't go any lower. You can only go higher. Mm -hmm. So take the leap. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. Look, you guys so can good. clap. Okay. We're in so church good. today. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of church moments. All right. Now, Emily, 
My question for you is she's saying take the leap, right? Yeah. And you see women that are going, okay, I'm raising my hand. I want to go after it. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. What is the thing that holds them back the most? Oh, well, the only thing they're ever thinking about is what if I fall? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting to me that the brain doesn't go, but what if I do do it mm -hmm. the way that I dream about? And I wish that everybody would just focus on that of instead of what if I fail, what if I just crush it? Like what if I blow it out of my wildest dreams and go further than I could ever dream of? That, that's where the power is. Mm. That's the power move, that's the flex. Mm. So good. All right, let's take an audience question. Who wants to go first? What? You guys are not scared of this mic. The person with the mic makes the money. Oh, look. Here we go. Uh, so my biggest question is kind of like you mentioned, which I love, but coming out of corporate America into being your own CEO, being your own boss, like getting paid, uh, paying yourself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what like drove that transition for you all? Like, How did you know when it was the right step to take? Um, and not only financially, but like mentally, emotionally, like what got in your way and how did you overcome that? Really good. You want to go first? Yeah, I'll jump in and I'll say the first thing that got in my way was focusing on who I was in that very moment. Often when it's time for you to elevate in life, the only thing that you focus on is where you currently are and how you currently see yourself. Mm -hmm. And the hardest thing that you, you will ever have to do in your life is see the person that God has called you to be versus the person that you are immediately in that moment. Okay, so we have to get past the roadblock. That's the roadblock of limitation. That's the roadblock of disbelief. That's the roadblock, the roadblock of comparison. Um, that's the roadblock of what if people see me fail at this? Because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the biggest fear. It's really not failing. It's other people witnessing the failure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So that's the first thing that I had to do. And then I had to think about my electric bill my gas bill, my mortgage, my car note, um, all of the things that I had to pay, my health insurance for my kids. I'm a mom of four, by the way, all right? And I had to say, are any of those people meeting me at the bank, meeting me at the place where I pay my gas bill, meeting me at the mortgage company where I was paying my mortgage at, or assisting me in this car note? No. Mm -hmm. So why am I allowing the, the opinions of other people to stop me? Right. And then I had to really ask myself, OK, God, I know that you did not bring me here on this earth to be mediocre. Mm. Like the way that I'm living right now, the lack of freedom, the lack of time, the lack of options, the lack of finances. I know that you have more for me than mm. this. Mm -hmm. And like I told you all before, things can't get any worse than where you are the moment that you decide that you deserve more. Mm. That moment that you decide, you're already at the lowest point in your life because you're sick and tired. Sick and tired is the best place to be, right? Once you sick and tired, baby, like you come out swinging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was making me think when I decided to leave nursing and I was so scared because you work so hard for this you know, degree and there's so much like, you know, people think, you know, oh, so highly of you and they trust you more when you have that, you know, degree next to your name or whatever. And the thing that kept me going was, okay, because I was in network marketing at the time. And I was like, okay, what if that network marketing company shut down the next day? Which we know. You can preach happen. it to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> I said, could I do it again or could I do something else? with the skills and the experience that I've created over the last couple of years? And the answer was absolutely. It, I didn't have to even think about it. It was like, yes, duh. And a lot of us, we just continue to think of our past, framing our future. And what we need to start doing is we go, okay, the skills and the talents that I have, I want that to frame my future. And from this, I'm gonna be, you know, think about that story in the Bible where Jesus had 5,000 people to feed and he had two loaves and a couple fish. 
And what did he do? He thanked, he thanked God for what he had in his hands. He blessed it and then it was multiplied. And so that's really what we're called to do is you got to look at your career and you say, okay, what are the skills and talents I have? that I can give out to people, God, will you bless this? Because I want more. Mm -hmm. And it's totally okay to want more. God's gonna give you the desires of your heart. You just gotta trust. You're not gonna know all the steps. You're gonna know one step, <laughs> and then you're gonna like wiggle waggle your way to the next step. And that's really how success mm -hmm. is, is like figuring it out along the way. All of us have such different journeys. Absolutely. On our way to success out of corporate, right? Yeah. And that's, I think, such a beautiful thing because it shows you it's not linear. It's not going to be the same for any of you sitting here. It's going to be different, and that's what's so beautiful. That's what makes life so great is all of our testimonies because mm -hmm. at, you know, the end of our lives, we get to give God all the glory for it. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just thinking about how God doesn't want you to be miserable. Mm. There's no part of him that thinks, I hope she's miserable today. <laughs> Girl, say that again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he really wants you to thrive mm -hmm. and have passion and live in that passion and turn that passion into profit, really, right? <laughs> and that allows for you to wake up in the morning and bless people around you with everything that he's given you. And for me, that's really when everything changed mm -hmm. is I remember there was a pivotal moment for me where I thought, I can't do this anymore. I'm miserable. And I will never forget it. I was laying in my bed and it was like God was in the room with me and just grabbed me out of the bed. And he was like, you're going to go do this and you're going to go do it now. And I literally said, why would I do that? I have everything everyone else wants. Mm -hmm. I have the dream career, the house, the family. I have all of it. But it wasn't what I wanted. And you get so scared because when you have what you're supposed to have and how it's supposed to look, don't mess with it. Be careful. I see this all the time with people. I have to be careful with money as if you could break it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how money works. You can't break it, right? And so it was in that moment where I just decided I never want anyone else to feel trapped like I did that day. I want everyone to have the courage and the freedom to step into their God-given talents and passions because I believe that God puts desires on our hearts for us to go out and fulfill them, not to sit and push them down mm. and hold ourselves back with it. No, he wants us to step into it and he wants us to say, God, if you see that in me, uh, let's go. Mm -hmm. I'll see it in me if you see it in me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm. I want to give a practical step here because sometimes I think people might quit too soon, mm -hmm. right, at their corporate, and then they are trying to build their side hustle out of like desperation. Yeah. I'm sure you guys scarcity. See They're this. like, I yeah. have to do it. Right. So I think it's really important to start building your side hustle or your business right now. You know, prove to yourself that you can take on the clients, that you can make the money right now, and then at least have, you know, three months in your savings. So that way it gives you some wiggle room to start building out. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's so important is just like having that egg mm -hmm. to feel safe to bloom. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can add on to that, I would say, you know, something that I also suggest is to be clear to be clear on what it is that you're actually going to offer to the world. Um, the first thing I always tell, you know, my clients to do is like just sit down for a second and to get clarity on what it is that you're good at. And don't think that that has to be something like so big. You know, we overlook this, the little small things. I'll never forget enrolling in a coaching program. Um, and it was really for people who struggle with waking up early in the morning. Because I struggled with waking up early in the that morning. That would be my class. Yes. Yes. I mean, I'd go to it. Yeah. I wouldn't teach people. Out and of it. I got in that group, and um, it was called the morning. What was it called? Miracle um, Morning. The Miracle Morning. Uh. And I got into the group. I got the book, and I literally started to implement mm -hmm. the strategies. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, when I got in there, there were thousands, thousands of people who were struggling with waking up early. And the book talked about, you know, waking up, changing your temperature, um, speaking life over yourself, affirmations, just all this stuff, right? But what I'm saying is that 
you all will probably hear someone say, I'm starting a community community for people who struggle with waking up early. Mm-hmm. And you will look at that person and say, child, <laughs> like, nobody's buying that. Well, I'm the person who bought that. Yeah. So don't think mm-hmm. that it has to be this big mm-hmm. thing. You know, mm-hmm. we all have something that we're good at, whether mm-hmm. it's waking up in the morning, being consistent with going to the gym, eating healthy, always thinking positive or having this optimistic, you know, spirit, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like that's a gift. And anything that you're good at, you can monetize. And I really just want us to see it that way. Mm. Mm. And talk about a great marketing idea too. You want to say the opposite of what everybody else is saying anyway. Mm. Exactly. So it's like such a win-win on both sides. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. So that makes me have a question for you as you're talking about this miracle morning. I need to buy that thing too because you know I'm not a morning person. (laughs) Okay. You have a program called Brand Rehab. Ignite your brand. We just rebranded it. (laughs) (laughs) It's called Ignite Your Brand now. Okay. So with Ignite Your Brand, how did you know that you were good at branding? So here is what I, I always say. If you go out and serve enough people, mm. you will figure out yep. what you're good at. Yep. We, we need to spend less time putting titles on ourselves. Yep. Yes. And then we, ser- we serve our way into our purpose. Yep. So I went straight into servitude, all right, helping people. People were just like, I want to do this. And I'm like, well, it needs to be called this. You need to market it this way. You know, this is what you need to sell it for. You know, this is how much it should be. And this is how you're going to build it out. And I was doing it for free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me start with saying that. Yes. <laughs> okay. You did that with me first time we met. <laughs> but this is how most coaches start, mm-hmm. right? Like to be a good coach, you're yeah. usually doing it for free mm-hmm. for several years. Yeah. And that's, you have that calling within you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I so love true. it. Right. Yeah. And I just started doing it for people. It's so funny. She was like, when well, we met, she was like, okay, I want to do this. I was like, all right, this is how you're going to do it. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Like one, two, three. And <laughs> I, no, she, you, you were like, what's your favorite word? And I can't remember what it was at the time. You're like, let's see what that means in French yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. it's like that's it you know so I'm really like I love that I could sit around and talk about that stuff mm-hmm. for hours and my friends were just like sis like you are good at this and then they started sending people to me mm. and then I just started helping people and then they started referring people and if you, when you are in your lane there's no traffic mm. yeah like there is no traffic mm. people just come to you and when you're good at what you do and you really care about people and you really have a passion for what you're doing you'll never run out of customers mm, wow you'll never run out of customers cause you never run out of passion yes and the passion is what drives the customers to you okay well on that note right because you gotta remember when people when they're just getting started and they are not having you know very big wins right now in their yeah. life they get really defeated quickly Mm -hmm. and what i've seen is you've got to create little small wins over time i talk about that in the book too because that will help you build up momentum in your life or in your business but how do you did you like keep feeding that passion Mm -hmm. because i know Mm -hmm. because i coach you you've 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 seen defeat right oh yeah so what is it that you do to feed your passion i mean i'm thinking back to when i was a brand new network marketer like over a decade ago and I got someone to post. Yeah. There was no picture. And it was bad. But they posted. I remember screenshotting it and sending it to my husband. And I was like, this is it. We are going to go all the way. <laughs> like, I was so excited yeah. for myself. And I think what happens is, as a brand new business owner, we get so distracted by external validation from mm-hmm. everybody else. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to get it. I mean, it's just not common. And you have to be the one to validate yourself. And if you're not validating yourself and you're waiting for someone else outside of you, you're literally hinging your own permission to cheer yourself on, on a human outside of you. And I've tried so hard to control the humans. I haven't figured it out yet. I don't know. Maybe (laughs) Kayla could write a book on it, but I have not figured out how to control the humans. Mm. And so whenever you have some sort of expectation outside of you that hinges on an external thing, it's a mess Mm -hmm. because then you're stuck. I mean, when it works, great, but that's just luck. Right. So that ability, I validate me. Yeah. I make my own stage. 
Yes. I mm-hmm. create it instead of waiting for someone to keep doing it for you outside of you. That's how you, on the down days, you're there. You're your own champion. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Champion self. Mm-hmm. So good. Mm-hmm. All right. I see you have a question. All right. So in an interview you did with your husband, I heard this really great thing that you said and you were both talking about this was my passion this wasn't necessarily his passion you know and our our spouses can be super supportive but it may not necessarily be their calling Mm. to join our business and I think that was a struggle for me it was like this is what I'm doing so I want to do this together yeah and he's very happy where he's at and not saying that he's not supportive and helpful but knowing that that's his lane and this is my lane Mm. That's so good. Mm. I want to hear what you guys have to say on this. <laughs> I saw this real. I saw this real go. this week. Yeah. This is so hilarious. But this is real going around, and it's like these women. They're sitting at the table, and they're like, "How women are on podcasts." And they're yes. like, "And did you I see? Saw it? I saw it. I saw it. I know what you're talking about. Go on." And they're like, "Every time a woman says something, women are like." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole the whole video is like, mm. and I'm just sitting here laughing in my head because we're like, mm. <laughs> we're over here, I'm all, mm. but that was so, so good, good that I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have to show that on the video. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> with that though, I think that when you're in a partnership with somebody, mm-hmm. it's it's a partnership, yeah, and. Uh, you commit to really love. Like, what does love actually mean? Love is accepting a person, but not accepting the person for who they are right now. It's accepting the person for who God made them to be. And I think that's really, really important, where a lot of us will go, oh, well, I love him. I want to accept him, and he's toxic, and he's this, and he's that. Uh, he doesn't support me in my business, and da 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 And you put up with some bull crap, Right. And I think that unconditional love is going, hey, I see you for who God made you to be. And so I have to live out God's calling on my life. Like I have to be the best person that God made me to be. Like she said, you know, I'm in my lane. It's not crowded over here. And by me doing that, it's actually going to call you to that level that God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have to do this because I love you that much. And it's also like you love other people around you too, right? But your partner... Mm -hmm. Like, if you guys are both loving each other that well, like, you're both going to eventually rise in different perspectives, right? It doesn't have to be in the same career or same, you know, passion at all. And I think the thing that Chase and I have figured out by a lot of freaking trials, like, oh, my gosh, I hated him for, like, years, okay? <laughs> it's true. He knows it. <laughs> we'll rip that band yeah. off. Yeah, that, that, that happened. But the thing that really changed was I started just praying for him every day. And I just declared over him everything that I knew to be true for him that he couldn't necessarily see for himself because he just kind of really struggled for a while. And I just prayed, prayed, okay, God, this is how you see him. He's a child of God. He is a warrior for you. He is meant to do great things. And I would just pray that, pray that, pray that. And then eventually he like got this idea for this business and he started to, it was so hard in the beginning for him to do it and not have wins, but I just kept Mm -hmm. praying for him. And so that's our job too, is like stop making him try to do anything and start praying for him. Yeah. And let me also just say that it is so important for men to have their own identity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the, biggest mistake that you can make as a woman is putting a man in a position where he does not have his own identity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Men are meant to have things that they are passionate about, things that excite them when they wake up in the morning. And every human being is supposed to have their own identity, right? Mm -hmm. We are supposed to wake up in the morning and we are supposed to fill our own individual purpose And we are supposed to feel good about the things that we are doing. So don't force what you're doing on him and vice versa. I think it's so healthy Mm. for people who are in marriages to have their own individual identities and have their own things that they work work towards every day. And then you can come and then 
sit down and say, okay, this is what I worked on today, or this is what I'm excited about, and what do you think about this, or what are, what's your feedback on, you know, how I'm doing this, versus, because let me make sure I say this, it's like I've done it, like mm -hmm. I've, I've done the we in business together and we in a marriage together thing, and it's, you know, being married is hard, okay? <laughs> but being married and working together and this is all y'all doing every single day, <laughs> baby, that's a different level of hardship and, and just patience. Like we, we're growing together every day. So first you all have to learn how to live together and love each other and be around each other every single day. Then we're going to say, come over here, quit your job, quit your business, and then we're going to work on this business together. Be careful <laughs> what you ask for, okay? <laughs> because I think we just all need our, our special space and I want to support my man I want to support you in your business but I also want to have my thing over here that God has said girl go do this and I didn't tell your husband to go do this and then both of you are gonna be great and when we all leave this earth we're gonna feel fulfilled because it's nothing worse than someone feeling like a prisoner in a relationship yeah. mm. wow oh it's so good both yeah. of can win and I, yes. I think too like we are so limited as human beings, even really advanced human beings that are, you know, thinking about their own thinking all the time as coaches. Right. We think that we know where God is taking us and we think we know where God's going to take our husband. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, we have this idea of what that's going to look like. And sometimes we just get so stuck on, well, this is what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that's going to be like or how that's going to work with my thing. Just give it to God and let him worry about it because he already has it figured out. I think that's the biggest key here is to know that sometimes you don't have the vision to see it and that's okay, but to ask for him to show it to you so that you don't have to be so caught up in thinking you know where it's going because we don't. Well, and if we knew where it was going, we'd mess it up. Totally. I mean, good thing he didn't show me where I was going to be right now or I would have screwed it all up. I wouldn't have signed up. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, no. I'll Especially sit. the last six months for me. I would be like, it's yeah. a good thing I didn't know this was coming. Yeah. So I would have never done it. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you so much for sharing what you have said. Yeah. Especially I like when you shared with us when you were at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, you have no way to go down, so, but we go up. So mm -hmm. it gets very <laughs> emotional every time when oh. I say about it. Mm -hmm. So I was, I had a really good life. So everything was going all good. It's you coming back, sorry. girl. Okay. Your good life is coming back, girl. Mm. Don't yeah, cry. So, but then something happened last year that really made me rethink everything. So I like your book title, What Do You Really Want? I saw that all along. I, I knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But when that happened, I began to wonder about myself, mm -hmm. about my life goals. Mm -hmm. Do I really know what I really wanted? Mm -hmm. And so through the way, I found a way to dig myself out of the hole and coming back up. It's like you said, there's no way to go down anymore. I have to go up. But it took me a while mm -hmm. to come back up. But there are still flashbacks, like when I'm even seeing this now. I thought I was out completely. But every time when I talk about it, I still have the flashbacks. Mm -hmm. um, so at a certain time, I want to ask you ladies, how did you ever learn when you came, when you were on your way up, how did you ever learn to forgive yourself, mm -hmm. to find your self-love again before you can help others? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Can I ask you what happened, just really quick, or do you not want to share? I would rather not share this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have forgiven myself for a lot of the dumb... Can you try something? Yeah. Can I? <laughs> yes. For the dumb shit I have done in my life, okay? I have made a lot of mistakes. You know, I have started my life over many times. You know, you are seeing Ronnie 2.3. Yeah. Like, you know how people have 2.0? I've gone 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, <laughs> baby, and this is 2.3, okay? Mm -hmm. I have looked back at some of the decisions and said, girl, what were you thinking? I've been hurt in relationships, all right? I've been divorced, all right? I have lost friends people that I thought once loved me and they didn't. But you know what? Life beats you up. But you know, at the same time, 
life strengthens you. Mm. And everything that you're going through right now, it probably feels like you are hurting so bad. But the thing about strength is it's a muscle. And you have to continue to know and understand that every single trial is building your muscle up right now. Girl, the tears, the the crying at night. I have cried myself to sleep at night, okay? Nobody knows a wet pillowcase like me, all right? (laughs) But you look back and you become stronger. You get through it. And you realize that God had you go through that season in your life because it's not even about you. You're going to meet someone that is going to need you to share that story. Mm. Yeah. And you're going to share the story of what you have gone through. And since I don't know if you've ever seen my, I did a TEDx talk and it's called share your shame. Mm. And right now you're still in the shame mode because you're not comfortable sharing that story yet. Right. But one day you're going to get free mm-hmm. and you're going to realize that the thing that you were once embarrassed of and embarrassed by, because, like, when I was going through all this stuff in my life, I was like, ooh, girl, can't nobody find out about that. Yep. <laughs> like, girl, they going to judge me, right? Like, if I tell mm-hmm. them this this story right here, girl, like, they didn't came and put my stuff out, okay? I'm living with somebody I was working with at one time when I was young. I'm like, they going to think I'm crazy. Now, I travel all over the world, honey, telling the stories that I was sitting in chairs crying about. Mm. Yep. That's what God's going to do for you. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think God doesn't tell us to hide. That is Satan. That's the enemy. Mm -hmm. He did it with Adam and Eve way back in the very beginning. Cover yourselves. God's like, you guys having fun? Garden of Eden nice? Satan comes in. Mm -hmm. Cover yourselves. Any time that we feel shame and we have to hide, just mm-hmm. like you were saying, that is not from God. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay to feel any of our feelings. The way you feel is always the right way to feel, for sure. But just like you were saying, like trauma coach over here, I'm like, my, my little dinging bells are going off all over the place because when you said that you don't cry about those things anymore, that is how you know you're healed. Yeah. That's how you know that you've been able to move past it. And I think everyone that's listening to you right now is having things in their mind where they're thinking, yep, I remember where I used to cry about that. Yep, that was a thing. And there Mm -hmm. were things that I was thinking about myself where I was like, I know I can like talk about that thing that I used Mm -hmm. to hide. Mm -hmm. That's the power move. That's where you get to be like, I learned from that. Now I can empathize with someone else who's been through it. And then you you sit back and you look up and you're coaching somebody about something. Mm. And then then your subconscious mind is like, who the hell do you think you are (laughs) sitting over here coaching somebody? And you were were over there crying five years ago. Now look at you. And that's just how life, that's just how life works. Like, Mm. it's not about us. The story that is really tugging on you and what you've gone through you are going to stand up one day. You're going to be telling it to other women, and they're going to be like, oh, my goodness, you went through that? Mm-hmm. And you're going to be like, yeah. Like, if I told y'all the things I've gone through, you can be like, girl, you don't look like half of what you've been through. And I never will. Mm-hmm. I never will. You'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll be fine. So something I want you to work on is whenever we're struggling with forgiving ourselves, it's because the inner child in us is really holding on to that story, that thing. And the more that you actually nurture your inner child and love on her and Mm -hmm. say, hey, it's okay. Actually, we continue to make mistakes for the rest of our lives because we're human. I'm not perfect, right? And you just really like teach, you gotta reparent your inner child because I don't know if your parents were very strict and there wasn't a lot of forgiveness in your household, but um, Mm -hmm. you know, that's I know what a lot of people that struggle with forgiveness maybe experienced as kids and so it's just time to reparent her and that's like a work you can do every day and like I know Emily she gets a little picture of little Emily I have pictures of little Kayla that I put out because um, my tendency is always self-criticize anytime anything goes wrong in my life even if I had zero control over it I'm like it's it's my fault somehow it's my fault somehow I did something wrong and that is a lie from the enemy because yeah. grace covers all of your mistakes. So even if you invited anything in that caused the bad situation to happen, 
God's grace covers that and you're a new creation, mm -hmm. you know? So you really just have to step into that and take authority over your life and start speaking truth of yes. what God has for you yeah. because he has good things in store for you. He knows the plans he has for you and he wants to prosper you. Well, and my very favorite definition of forgiveness is by Dr. Paul Jenkins. He's the psychologist that I do yeah. a lot of stuff with. And he said, forgiveness is just giving up your demand for a better past. Mm. Yes. And it resonates with me so much because how often do we sit, especially as Christian women, and say, well, if I forgive, like you should forgive. We should forgive. But then you have this resistance. Well, if I forgive, then does it make it right? So you get caught up in it, right? So you're like, oh, okay. But that definition, forgiveness is giving up your demand for a better past. Mm. Yeah. I mean, chills. Because that's really all it is. You're not saying it was okay. You're not saying that what that what happened is something they should be forgiven of. It has nothing to do with anyone except for yourself. Just giving up your demand. Yeah. for what happened and being okay with it and being able to like wrap your arms around yourself and say, I got you. Yeah. We're good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so. then there's also this saying that says, learn to accept the apologies you never get. Mm -hmm. So I just act like people that already said sorry, girl, and I just move <laughs> on. <laughs> so start there. They didn't already apologize, honey. Go. You're free. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that. But and just constantly forgive yourself, mm -hmm. right? And because when we're in unforgiveness, that separates us from God. So I know that that's like really hard to say, but when I'm struggling with not forgiving myself, I'll just say, God, give me the strength today to forgive myself. And will you just put somebody in my path to encourage? Because I know mm -hmm. that's always when I feel good. And then you'll find people mm -hmm. that need what you have that day. And you're like, thank you, God. You know, mm -hmm. it lights up your path. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm trying to remember what my original question was styling. because there's so many good nuggets that you ladies styling have, niches have dropped. Yeah. Like so my question, and I think you touch on this a little bit as well, like the clarity piece. Um, I moved to New York. It's going to be 10 years next month from California. And I took this leap of faith um, because I did feel God calling me to really be a light in the fashion industry. Um, I moved here. I did all that. And I realized like that wasn't the way that I like I just, that wasn't the actual path, like in terms of the way that I thought that God was directing me. Um, and when my mom passed away, I just had this moment where I was like, this is not what life is. And I decided that I wasn't gonna you know, continue with that. Long story short, I ended up um, kind of going down like personal development and learning a lot of different things. And right before COVID, I was like pumped. I'm like, I'm gonna start this business, like my coaching business, not really doing the fashion, just more so wanting just to help women in general. And COVID happened and it really just, I think it, it did, it really set me back financially because I was like freelancing, I was doing all this stuff. Um, and now I'm at a place where I ended up going back to corporate America basically, because I was like, I need to find a job. Like, I live in an expensive city, I need to make this happen. And I don't think that at that moment I was strong enough in terms of like, I still had so much inner healing that I needed to do to really launch my business and step into that like CEO that God is calling me to be. But my question is, and going back to the piece of the clarity is that I want to, I mean, I've been working with women kind of silently doing styling here and there, but I want to use it more so in terms of like styling, but sharing my faith. Like there's just so many things that I, I'm really I passionate about. I, I like, and I think that I struggle with that clarity piece of like, okay, you were just showing up on social media, you know, two years ago doing something else. So I feel like my confidence has kind of dropped a little bit because I've also been told from other coaches, like you need to pick, like, pick a niche, like you can't combine the two. Um, Tell them to go to hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So the first thing is, the thing that I love about branding is that you have to know and understand that there is always going to be passion and service. Mm -hmm. And when you combine passion and service, you are operating in gift. All right. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, girl, you love fashion. Like mm -hmm. I could tell the wide leg jeans, the <laughs> boots, the vintage tee, the statement necklace, the timeless blazer, the Gucci bag. Like I'm here for it. I got your whole vibe down. OK, mm -hmm. that's the first thing. The second thing is you use the fashion to get the eyeballs on you. Mm -hmm. And then when they get on your page, you help them level up. Yeah. So you have to 
your marketing plan, this is like, okay, Ignite Your Brand Express, all right? <laughs> your marketing strategy needs to be you are doing get ready with me's, you are, you know, taking people on your journeys when you're picking out clothes, you're teaching women different things about fashion, but you're also incorporating personal development, mm -hmm. okay? You're talking about overcoming, you're talking about forgiveness, you're talking about whatever it is, but you incorporate those two things together. Because here's the thing, no one wants to keep on, like, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like boring, like, I don't like boring coaches. Mm -hmm. If you go on my page, honey, just put your playground clothes on and get ready to go down the sliding board because we're doing a little bit of everything on there. <laughs> because I'm a mom, like I'm gonna put these clothes on, I'm gonna go with my friends. I might go on there and I'm gonna talk about like you playing small. You're gonna, it's a mix of things, but I do branding and I help women like build their companies confidently in a way that they're doing things that, they're, that they actually love. Yeah. You can do fashion. You were called to do fashion. Mm -hmm. You left LA mm -hmm. to come to New York to do fashion. Yeah. We had to get a quick job. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. Like I jumped out there one time in my life and I said I was starting a beauty brand. <laughs> Honey, when you realize that you could not pay your bills and feed kids off of 10 and $12 <laughs> products, yeah. you gotta go back to work. Yeah. I had to go back to work. There's lots of ways to make money. And there's no shame in that. And there's no shame. I had to go get that job. But that job helped me fund my business, all right? So don't be ashamed that you had to get a job. You know what? I'm, I'm going to salute you mm -hmm. for not having pride and ego mm -hmm. and say I'm not going back to work. Honey, I went back to work. I went and worked for the government. And then I worked my tail off when I got there. So I want you to get back in the thick of things, get out of that rut, Put your clothes on, spin mm -hmm. around, press record on that phone, and get back into your fashion, and then do personal development and mix it together. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So what are we selling? What are we selling? What, yeah. What's your coaching program? Oh, my coaching program is helping women to, one, heal by, heal by using style, because I do feel like style is a tool that you can use to yes. embrace, to heal, heal your inner child, because you're allowing yourself to have this expression, but also really allowing yourself to be in your body, you know, and that's a different thing where when I used to work with men, women in the past, like you can style somebody in a perfect outfit, but if internally there's still something missing, like all of that doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Your mm -hmm. brand is going to be called Healing and Heels. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> That's going to be the name of your brand. It's and it's so going to be geared towards women who we wear heels every day. Mm -hmm. And as we are getting dressed up and putting on these clothes, we are also battling mm -hmm. and overcoming and healing internally. That's what your brand is going to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. I appreciate that. All so right. Good. So when you blow up, you better come back and get I, it. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. That's it. I want to see these videos. I want to see these clothes. Okay. I think I have that blazer. Is it from Zara? Yes. Yeah, girl, I have that blazer. Okay. I want more of that, and I want you to get affiliate links for all these. Are you going to like to know it? So I'm not because it's a conflict of interest with where I work. Mm -hmm. So you that's that, that's a little bit of the issue is that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but you don't have to It's okay. Me. You make money coaching. Yeah, yeah make yeah. money coaching. Okay, yeah, make money coaching. Mm -hmm. okay. Then quit that job and get your like to know it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, what is that place that everyone's selling their clothes on? Poshmark. Poshmark. Mm -hmm. Can you sell your clothes on there? Yeah. Yeah, just get buy clothes and then sell your clothes on Poshmark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I then love that. Then you get brand that. deals and you can quit the job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the goal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. what, what do you think is going to be the obstacle that For, stands in the way? I mean, the obstacle, honestly, is that I work a full-time job, so I'm exhausted. Um, I am a leader in the company that I work at, so I also deal with a lot of just people's energies. Um, but I'm also, you know, I think it's just more like, I'm at that place where I'm, I don't wanna be miserable, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I've been doing this for two and a half years back in this job, and I think I just had that moment where I'm like, okay, this is it, like this is, this is the, the time. Like I can't, I don't wanna stay on this hamster wheel and then just like look back and time has passed. So. I think for me it's just really one i've been purposely 
being in communities as well because I think for the longest time I had that shame of like being alone and mm -hmm. just being by myself um, so just interacting with other women and being in communities um, and just really mm -hmm. like um, what's the word what's what am I trying to say um, just like time management like timing myself okay yeah. how much money do you need to make a month to quit that job this like is her safe. favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> 5000 probably. I say, like, to be on the safe side. Right. Okay, so 5000 yeah. So you just go and say, okay, how many people can I help in yeah. order to make up for that, right? Mm -hmm. So I know for me, I hired a stylist, right? Mm -hmm. And she charges based on different little projects, okay? And so for what I see for you is, like, the healing and heals of VIP day. Like, what my stylist does is she comes in and does a closet overhaul. And then mm -hmm. she'll sell everything for mm -hmm. me. Yeah on eBay or whatever, so making me money. And she basically pays for herself after she, mm -hmm. she sells all my clothes. Mm -hmm. But on that VIP day, you're doing the healing stuff that you wanna do. Yes. You're bringing in outfits for her to try on. That day should be $5,000, period. To start. To start, yeah, I mean, yeah. yes. Because they have to also buy money for clothes too. Right. So, yeah. you know, like, I think but that's- It's gonna go up. It's gonna go up. That's what I'm saying. It's like, gonna go up. That's, you're gonna look back on that and be like, remember when I only charged 5,000 for my VIP days? Remember when people could get me for that? Mm -hmm. Like that's your future. Thank yes, you. so good. So mm -hmm. so that's what I would start praying over, okay. right? In like you're a faith-based yes. person. Yes. So whenever you decide that you're gonna go after something, then you go and give it to God. Okay. Yeah. And you don't get focused and hung up on the numbers because God's gonna blow your mind yep. with how Absolutely. many people are gonna come through. Mm -hmm. And it, you're gonna have a wait list of people, but you have to mm -hmm. live in, in that expectation. And when you go to work, everything you do, you do it with excellence. Mm -hmm. So you don't walk in and say, I'm tired, and I gotta leave these mm -hmm. people and all these people's energies. No, okay. that is not how you walk around. You go, okay, I am going to battle mm -hmm. today. Like I just showed her a picture of armor mm -hmm. because that's how you got to walk in mm -hmm. because everything, like you have to act like everything in this world is com coming to take you down because it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I got to go, okay, you know what? I know I'm going to have to deal with bad energy today, but I'm going to show up in like joy yeah. and Christ likeness and everybody around me is going to be better for it today. And I'm going to be blessed because of it. God's going to enlarge my territory. End of story. And stop fighting with it. Yeah. You start accepting it. And, and something that you also want to pray for is, is that you ask God to show you why you're in that job. Mm. Because you're in that job for a reason. Mm. And I just want, that's all I have to say. Like, there's a reason why you're at that job. So don't focus on getting out of it. Mm. Focus on discovering why he put you there. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, no, I was literally on the same wavelength <laughs> as you. That's what I was going to say is everything that I have ever struggled through in any of my businesses. Even when I was building like my network marketing business, my coaching business, and I was saying, why can't this be easier? Mm -hmm. What is it? And then years later, I look back and go, oh, well, if I would have had that person not quit, I would have never had to keep working. Then I would have never learned this skill mm -hmm. that I now use to mm -hmm. blow up my coaching business. Mm -hmm. So he's just stacking skills right now on you mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And we just got it absorb it like a sponge like give it to me i know that i'm here because he's stacking my skills for what is coming for me mm. thank you i i received that like 100 mm -hmm. percent. thank you ladies yeah mm. so amazing yeah. So good. all right so you guys my next and last question for you is what do you really want what i really want is to be surrounded by people in my closest inner circle that all know what they really want mm. so that there's no one threatened by me knowing what I really want. Mm. And gravitating those people toward me seems like the dreamland of all friendship groups, mm -hmm. which I've struggled with recently. Mm -hmm. And the idea of being around people that are clear on what they want so they are not ever intimidated by you being so clear about what you want, that's, that's what I'm off to create. Because what's that going to give you in your life? It elevates everyone and it gives, I mean, you give yourself your own freedom to create whatever you want. But for me, that's safety. Mm. To be me unapologetically all the time. Yeah. That's freedom. 
Mm-hmm. That's peace. Well, honey, I asked my daddy for a lot of things, okay? <laughs> so father. <laughs> yes. But let me just say this. Uh, for me, I want to continue to serve women. And I want to continue to help women become more confident in doing the things that they love and knowing how to monetize those things Mm -hmm. so that when women are in dark places, we have more financial um, stability to make better choices in life. That's Mm -hmm. the first thing. The second thing I'm going to do, not what I want to do, I'm going to do, all right, is I'm going to continue to build a community of women and women who support each other who share resources who uh, can keep your secrets who don't judge you and I want to have freedom I want to stay home and I want to do nothing I want to (laughs) make video content and I want to wait until God gives me a word and then when he gives me a word I turn my camera on in my studio that's in my house and I just speak from my gut and I push it out into the into the world and I monetize that and continue to build my beauty brand my brand is you know around self-care and you know really encouraging women to prioritize self-care I want women to just be at peace Mm -hmm. and make a whole lot of damn money let's go and that's just it (laughs) that's what I want to do you're doing it that's it that's what I want Mm -hmm. okay well Mm -hmm. What I want is this right here, to continue the conversation and to keep just elevating women in my life, all of you in this room, just helping you all get what you want is what brings me like the fulfillment and happiness. And what I'd love is for all of you guys to connect, make sure to take photos and pour into each other. So asking, okay, if if she wants her beauty brand to grow, all of you guys better be buying her beauty brand. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's how we all rise together. And so um, I hope that you, when you guys think about what do you really want, you also know that every time you have a win, you're showing women how yeah. to do it. And yeah. so your job is when you win, to tell other people. Yeah. Don't be ashamed of it. Sh- you shout it from the freaking rooftops, mm-hmm. you guys because that win is going to propel that woman to keep going in her darkest moment. So remember that. I love you all so much. That was amazing.